Welcome! Ooh, a little bit of a... Fisheye has just been a little bit off. I feel like that was indicative of Fisheye's play thus far. It feels like he has not been playing to his usual capacity. I'm not sure if it is uh, sleep arrangements or what, but it just seems like his playstyle has just been a little bit off his usual sharp self. He's starting at the 12 o'clock location as the Grey Protoss. This is going to be on Ascension. This is BSL Season 13 Hasu League. The final match, or not the final match, second match of the, well, p potentially the final match of the loser's bracket. I'm trying to gather myself as I'm starting up casting. Fisheye ended up dropping game one. And now he's on the verge of elimination, and I'm going to be honest. I felt like Fisheye was the guy that I was going to choose to break out of that. That, that I expected him to be the winner out of this bracket overall. I was expecting him in the number one position and a really big fight for position two. And I was maybe thinking Keen might sneak into that spot otherwise. In the meantime, do life starting at the 9 o'clock location as the, once again, Marine Green Terran. And after game one, I don't know, potentially might feel like he's in a strong position. That game went kind of how I was hoping, mostly because I'm like, yeah, I feel like those timing pushes, if you can get the vultures out in the map, really make things difficult for Protoss on Heartbreak Ridge to follow. So I almost feel like it encourages a lot of cheese earlier in the map. Looks like we are seeing a Supply Depot and Barracks alongside. On this corner, I am almost wondering if you're going to see... So no indications of a gateway yet. So I almost wonder if we're going to see an attempted 12 Nexus from Fisheye. Otherwise, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be... From this point on, I'm going to be splitting some of the casting up from Hasu Lee just because I have a, an immense amount of games to do. And I want to make sure that these get out sooner rather than later. And also, there's other casters in BSL that want to uh, do the coverage. And so it's like we can get through these games a little bit more rapidly. We are seeing a 12 Nexus here at the 12 o'clock uh, 12 location. So if you're on the YouTube playlist and all of a sudden you get bounced to someone else, that is Revolution Veer, who does coverage. I think he actually does Gosu League coverage here and there. And he's going to be helping me cover uh, Hasu League as well. And I think he's also already, I think he's got a jump on Chobo League. And I'm going to try to join him to cover that. We're also both going to be covering the Fighting Spirit Mania, which is a huge glut of games. Scout initially to the bottom right-hand corner for Do Life. So just so if you guys are aware at this stage, especially round of eight on, if things get bounced around to other YouTube channels in the playlist, that is what is happening there. Uh, Do Life pausing. It looks like we are seeing... So this is going to work out, or at least it'll be beneficial for Fisheye. He's going to have the later scout, first of all. Do we see gas? And unfortunately, there's only one SCV on gas. We are seeing a factory first opener, but having less gas to start sometimes can limit... Terran's ability to respond. There is the factory down. So it is possible that you could have a quick additional 2 SCV on gas to get a rapid second factory. But usually, this is one thing that Terran complain about, is their ability to respond to 12 Nexus with, pro with proper aggression. Especially based on gas timings in comparison to getting their own Nexus down. So, second Nexus up. Do life seeing it. That can't be exciting for him. First Zealot making its way across the map as well. Second Zealot in production, cybernetic score opening. And interestingly enough, we aren't seeing the follow-up of the two gate. Usually you'll see just two gate as a common follow-up. And that is potentially going to mean there are going to be less units to engage this. The probe coming along the line, the Marines marching up, they're going to be able to kill that scout. That's actually a big win for do life. So the Marines marching forward to engage the Zealot. The Zealot pushing off. SCV's pulling off the line with a fourth Marine immediately. This is going to be do life's response. He wants to go ahead and take that Nexus down instantly. One Marine down, though, already. So nice engagement. And they're just walking down the line. So do life. Not microing this. Loses three Marines immediately. And the, the Zealot gets wiped out from there. But a lot of damage done. A Vulture with a follow-up. So now if these SCVs do get a bunker down, there's only going to be a single unit in there. It's going to be a bit before a Dragoon is out on the field. Sorry, never mind. Dragoon immediate follow-up because that Cybernetic score follow. So the SCVs... Honestly, it would probably get cleaned up. So it's SCVs versus probes on the front line, moving back and forth. One probe getting wiped out. The Vulture trying to get as many kills as possible. But already SCVs getting wiped out on the front line. So do life taking some big hits economically early. And this Dragoon should easily be able to handle this Marine and first Vulture. However, more Vultures are peeling in. Let's see if the Vultures can continue to try to get additional damage done. It looks like they are getting additional damage in the midst of this, but keep in mind all those SCVs coming off the line keeps Do Life's SCV count lower in the midst of this. So even though he's running forward with all of these and has picked off a good number of probes, this is still going to put him behind overall. And Do Life now backing off. He is in rough economic shape. 
He's grabbed his natural expansion, this natural expansion extremely delayed. Fisheye keeping up with probe macro in the midst of this. Two Dragoons actually pressing forward, and honestly, he's in a run to just get his front... I like that he scooted this Vulture up to try to create a distractionary attack, but he's going to have some trouble defending his front door even. Machine Shop morphing in. Range also being upgraded. Two Gates there as well. Robotics Facility to follow. The Vultures are sneaking around, but there's two Dragoons right there, and these are honestly Vultures that potentially do life might have wanted on his front door. So this is 75 resources and a lack of defense to kill two probes. I don't know that that's the best exchange at this in this situation. Three Marines now in the bunker, so that is going to hold, but range is going to be online in not too long. And yeah, you're going to have a siege tank, but there's potentially five Dragoons that are going to be on the front before that siege tank's even in position. So that's going to be at high risk of getting picked off. Plus, do life behind in the overall SCV count. So things not working out for do life, at least initially. Trying to move that bunker up. Trying to get the, the additional hits while he while he can. Ooh, I would not risk peeking out like this. That very brave maneuvers. Two Dragoons, I think, hiding to the north for Fisheye. I think he's trying to provide more indications that he's not going to be aggressive with this attack. Maybe he can take down that bunker rapidly. Maybe he can pick up the siege tank and get the bunker, potentially. Let's see if this Vulture wanders out. Mines are not upgraded. Mines would be a huge boon here if you can just get mines on the front. They're not going to be effective for map control. This is one thing is, is if you have Vultures, you need to get them out on the map. The Dragoon's plugging the gap in the meantime, so now those have been spotted. Two Siege Tanks on the front. This is also going to delay Siege Tech, which is potentially going to make these, if more Dragoons move up, make these Siege Tanks a little bit more vulnerable. But in the meantime, Fisheye holding back. He's got his Citadel of a Dune up. This is looking much more like a, a standard Fisheye-style uh, game. Observatory in position. If he can get an observer right on the front, could even apply additional pressure. Range is finished, and he is opting to immediately switch into the two-gate Stargate. Well, never mind. He's going to go two-base Arbiter. So Templar Archives up, Stargate up as well. So he kind of wants to rush Arbiter in the mid-game. Interesting play. Three tanks now pushing back the Dragoons. Without the Dragoons to support, this is uh, trying to utilize the high ground. That is opening up the Vultures to go ahead and sneak through the gap. Looks like do life got some good exchange on the fire rate. So producing those three siege tanks to open up the map a little bit. Dragoons are already in position. The pylon wall is there as well. So not going to get a lot of scouting information. And currently it's 34 probes to just 27 SCVs for Do life. Do life just now getting his armory down. He's sitting off two factories. So desperately trying to, to open up map control. And is able to do so. And I'm wondering if he's going to follow this up with... I don't even know if it would be like a level 1 weapons timing. Mean, he might want to just move with a large amount of siege tanks. And he might actually catch Fisheye off guard. Because Fisheye opting to go for this very early tech switch. Thing is, is Fisheye... Or Dulife doesn't know it. He doesn't have commsat. He doesn't know what his opponent's up to. So he's going to have to take risks either way. So currently, laying mines above the third. And just backing off from here. Let's see if the Dragoons... And there's still... This is another critical piece. Is the first observer moving out, so it's going to be a while before those mines can get cleared. Second Observer in production. Let's see if Fisheye... Play. So yeah, now moving up with that Second Observer to go ahead and take a peek. So Fisheye maneuvering as though he wants to go ahead and grab his third, but he's going to have a very fast follow-up Arbiter in the midst of this, and he's also critically got this Observer above this factory line, so he's seeing absolutely everything. He's seeing that it's two factories. He's seeing uh, the machine shop finishing just now, so Siege Tech just finishing. Engineering Bay in production, and this everything, it looks like we lost a Dragoon here on the front to a Wayward Mine. Everything thus far, second gas being grabbed, indicates to me that Do Life is anticipating trying to grab a positional third a little bit more rapidly, and hoping that Fisheye plays a bit more defensively, which currently is going to be the case. First Arbiter is going to be in production momentarily, and that is going to be a big defensive boon as well as offensive boon, especially considering there's a complete lack. So keep in mind, you're going to have Arbiters out on the field without an academy anywhere on the map. So there's no mobile detection. There's a long distance before Fisheye, before Do Life is going to have any form of mobile detection. So that Arbiter is going to be very, very strong. Six siege tanks on the front door. It looks like third Nexus is being grabbed. I think there are indications of that for Do Life. Some vultures out to the corner. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and plop down and grab his 6 o'clock location as a bit of a risk. Let's see if that Observer moves forward. And he, this, with the Arbiter, however, and with the Dragoons on the field, as long as there's some Dragoons and maybe a cannon here at the third, a cannon or two, he will feel very comfortable pressing in and 
doing some, I don't know, potential damage. That Arbiter, without the detection behind it, is going to be massive. It's going to be extreme. We have a couple turrets on the corner to prevent recalls, but honestly, I'm not sure that recalls even the issue. Finally, the Academy going down. But there's going to be a window where this Arbiter is going to be out on the field, and there's nothing that Dulife can really do about it. And I'm wondering if Fisheye is going to capitalize on that. He's already set up a decent, looks like, pylon wall to potentially protect this third and those probe lines. He's now moving out with those Dragoons. The Vultures look like they're trying to sneak up along this corner. Looking for the Arbiter to, to join. I'm missing its location. I can hear it. Looks like it's just sitting over that natural expansion. And a knight? Wow, are you kidding me? The 9 o'clock base being grabbed by Fisheye. He's going to go ahead and grab that fourth. So playing very aggressive economically. Dragoon eating a bit of a mine right there as he's pressing forward. Currently has a supply lead, has a big tech lead. Academy is up. The commsat station's just now being built. So the window for the complete... So this is still going to keep that Arbiter strong in the mid-game before science vessels are out there to provide the continuous detection. But... As far as being completely unopposed, the window for that is closing, which is okay. I think Fisheye is happy to go ahead and grab the 9 o'clock in the midst of that and play that strong economic uh, movement there. The Dragoon's midfield. The Arbiter still... I'm a little bit interested to see Fisheye push that Arbiter so rapidly. Maybe he just wants that extra energy. First comsat, Oops. By do life. Just checking out that natural expansion, it looks like, before moving in. The Vultures... Trying to peek through. They are able to get a single kill right there. But they're going to get boxed in. And wiped out. Looks like they were able to get a single probe for three vultures. Able to find room to wander down to the 9 o'clock location. So he knows it's up. And actually able to... Uh, yeah, be annoying at least. And keep that from being saturated for a moment. Wonder if Fish Eyes actually... It looks like he is upgrading recall. So it's potent yeah, potentially wanting an early recall timing. Second Arbiter out. And already making his way to a third... Also upgrading level 1 weapons, and as far as the weapon upgrade situation goes, we do have level 1 weapons online for do life, but level 1 weapons for fish eyes not that far behind. Level 1 armor also on the way. And right now fish eye has a huge lead in supply. Checking out the corners just to make sure an additional sneaky base was not taken. Sitting on what looks like 6 gateways, double stargate, to just keep that those Arbiters pumping, which he can definitely roll economically with his four bases. In the meantime, two additional factories being dropped down to go up to what looks like seven overall. And I believe do life's plan from here is let's just sit back, get that level two weapons, get that level one armor, play a little bit more defensively, have a glut of siege shanks to crush anything. Where do life's plans potentially is like, okay, you go ahead and take your three bases. I'm not going to let you get anything past that just because of the continuous recall and everything on the map. The vultures have been able to sneak out. They haven't gotten a lot accomplished, though, in the midst of this. Observer lagging behind these dragoons. Those mines, damn, precarious to the right. And the dragoons up on the high ground, but that's a lot of siege. They aren't sieged currently. The vultures working on that pylon wall. Let's see if fisheye opts to move back or if he's going to engage it because honestly it looks like maybe if he can move out uh, might be able to get something done here recall in the main that i missed should have kept an eye on that decent recall took out the armory critically i believe i think there was an armory in position here that might have been the second one it looks like he's going to get some supply depots as well the siege tanks flooding back here and the science vessels coming in and there's some energy to help deal with this there's the second comsat but this is the units aren't fully in position to engage. And again, with the lack of the science vessel, this Arbiter might get more accomplished than it might have otherwise. Third comsat. Finally, that's cleaned up. And the Arbiter going to be able to exit without too much trouble. But while that was happening, while those units were out of position, the Dragoons counterattacking. It looks like they're running a handful of mines being engaged. But counterattacking to the third base as well. The siege tanks having to siege up on the low ground to try to engage this. And Fisheye can basically just A move into this. The Dragoon taking some splash damage. You can see how Dulife having some trouble engaging in the midst of this. And while all that's happening, Fisheye's also grabbing an inside 12 o'clock base. And another recall in the main of Zealots. Fisheye is everywhere. I can't keep up with him. Just continuous stream of comsats. Was that the last comsat? Looks like there's still energy at the third. 
But the Zealots moving in, taking out Siege Tanks. And really, right, so the main currently out of SCVs. Second turret looks like it was built to cover that line. It's going to get wiped out. And the Arbiter actually able to move out once again. And right now, Dulife survives, but he's still down a ton of supply. He's actually been lucky to keep as many SCVs as he has. Zealot still hanging out in the main. Lost a lot of supply depots. I think he lost an armory in the midst of this. He does have his second armory to the south. Still trying to clean up what's going on. And in the interim, Fisheye has taken control of the complete northern portion of the map. He's running off... So, is his main even thin? So his main's looking thin. Still running off double Stargate, which I really like. You might actually want to take down a pylon maybe in the front to open things up. But he's basically four base versus... Potentially five base versus uh, three base. And do life... Pretty well boxed in, and honestly, it's almost I'm almost wondering if there's just gonna be continuous, continuous recalls from this stage on. Do life wondering the same, adding a, a large amount of Goliaths to supplement this attack force. And I only see five siege tanks out on the field, which might be dangerous. Level two weapons has come online, but keep in mind that level one armor upgrade was dead as it was being built. Second armory recreated. Fisheye positioning up on the high ground, near 200 supply, where he can just start engaging with continuous attacks. He also has an observer overhead. The vultures opting to do a preemptive engagement. No Arbiter here with support. Now the Arbiter's briefly moving in, but it looks like Fisheye thinking better of it. Does have stasis energy shortly to potentially engage this, but instead opting for a recall again in the main. The Arbiter perishes, but more SCVs getting wiped out. More infrastructure, and this is... And Dulife's completely out of position, and it looks like he's just going to keep these units here, realizing that there is a potential of a counterattack, but that means these Dragoons and Zealots might be able to wreak even more havoc. Now Fisheye actually engaging that with the Arbiter overhead. Does he have a stasis? Those tanks were clumped up, and now Fisheye putting on a clinic. Completely engaging this. I'm going to call it here. This is over. I'm expecting a GG after the third. Potentially going to get wiped out. Yeah, there's GG from Do Life immediately. That was more fisheye style play. GG. That was that was a clinic right there. Great play top to bottom from fisheye. So good. That's, yeah, that was why I was expecting him to pull out of this bracket. Great play from him. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to a game three. Maybe Do Life. Here's the thing. Do Life has played a little bit inconsistently, but he has shown a level of play that can meet Fisheye's potential. Let's see if we're going to see that in game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.